Hello everybody, it is Star Raptor, and as always, I'm excited to break down yet another Star Wars trailer. This time it is for the D23 special look, although I'm not really certain if you can uh, describe this as a trailer. There was lots of old footage cut in at the beginning, but we did get quite a bit of awesome new reveals in this trailer. So first off, we do have a poster that came out as well at the panel at D23. I love the design of the Emperor looming in the background, his visage, which is haunting Rey and Kylo. So moving on to our first shot of the video, we have Finn, we have Rey, we have Poe, we have C-3PO, and we have Chewie. They're all together. I love how we're getting these characters together at this last film in the saga, especially because we haven't really had Rey having too many interactions with Poe, and it's great to see everybody, you know, together after everybody was all kind of segmentalized in The Last Jedi. If you look very closely in the background right there, we have a new ship design. Again, this is on Pasana. Looking at another angle of this shot, we have them approaching a very densely populated city or village, whatever you want to call it, of what could be the indigenous people of this planet. Here we have Leia Organa, we have Carrie Fisher, who unfortunately passed away before she was able to film this very film. And well, the thing is, they were able to use deleted scenes and scenes they didn't use from The Force Awakens. Obviously, this wasn't part of The Force Awakens, judging by the environment. So it looks like they kind of transplanted her into this scenery. So I'm very interested and very curious to see how she is in this movie because this is like the first time I think they've ever done this in the history of film. Here is an epic heroic shot of what could be the resistance fleet. We have a blockade runner from the OT as well as B-wings from the OT guys. I haven't ever seen these things in action, in live action. We haven't. It's just a, a fact because we see them go to hyperspace. We don't actually see them in Return of the Jedi, at least to my knowledge, actually firing lasers or firing missiles. So hopefully we get to see them shine. They'll have their glory in this movie, but we also have the A-wings and the Y-wings, which we haven't seen the Y-wings in this era of uh, Star Wars. So that's gonna be pretty cool. We also see a new ship in there as well to the right. Maybe that's the same ship that was on Pasana in that first shot. This shot is tantalizing, guys. This shot next to the last shot of this video is my favorite because Look at all these Imperial Star Destroyers. Yeah, that's right. I said Imperial. These aren't First Order, which leads me to believe it's uh, two different options you could have here for speculation. This could be maybe Emperor Palpatine's secret fleet that he had hidden, hidden away in the unknown regions, waiting and biding its time. And maybe he'll come in and he'll take out the Resistance and maybe the First Order as well. But I think the more likely option is this could be an actual flashback to giving us more information on the origins of the First Order. So if you guys have read the Aftermath trilogy of novels, there is a, a contingency plan put into place. If the Palpatine died, he had this plan where all the Imperials would go to Jakku, they would have this big battle against the Rebels, and then they would end up fleeing to the Unknown Regions. And that's exactly what happens, is you had all these Star Destroyers, they are led by Grand Admiral Sloan to go into the Unknown Regions and rebuild essentially a new kind of empire. And this is another angle, and, and it shows just the immensity of this entire fleet. And it also, now that I'm looking at it, kind of seems like it's almost too uniform to almost be like from an artistic angle, which could be meaning that it could be a kind of vision as well. Here we have Finn, and we have a new character, Jana. We do not know a lot about Jana. Um, she is on a horseback type of thing with a light bow in one of the Vanity Fair photos. There's also a pilot um, in right behind her. It could be either Snap Wegsley or Nia Num, judging by the helmet. This ship is definitely not the Millennium Falcon, and if you look outside that window, it almost looks like the same hue, the same kind of coloration of that prior shot for all the Resistance ships. Here we have C-3PO with red eyes. Like, what the heck? I mean, if you guys have read the Darth Vader series of comics, you know there's a character called Triple Zero. He's this maniacal droid who's just obsessed with torturing people. So hopefully that C-3PO hasn't, like, absorbed that Matrix complex of that droid somehow. This shot kind of makes me apprehensive because I see this shot and I'm thinking, oh no, not another Starkiller base, not another kind of doomsday weapon that the First Order has. But I'm thinking it could also be a flashback as well to like maybe the Starkiller testing itself out on different planets. Here we have another shot of a character on that same kind of planet design that could be appearing with uh, Leia in the previous shot. 
This shot shows us how far Rey has come in her training. So remember, this is about a year after the events of The Last Jedi, and according to J.J. Abrams and in uh, the panel at Celebration, she said Rey at this point has kind of hit her pinnacle of skill. So she has learned a lot of what she needs to know at this point. She's a very cunning warrior, and this is a move that Vader did. So again, she's kind of absorbing different abilities that different Jedi have used, like the Jedi mind trick, like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now she has this. She can also read into people's minds. This shot is very important because it shows that this is not the TIE silencer of, of Kylo Ren, but this is the TIE interceptor, which we also seen in the teaser trailer with Rey doing a backflip over that. I thought originally that maybe it was Poe or Finn flying that TIE interceptor they had stolen to help train Rey, but no, that had to be Kylo, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, so he was maybe helping train her in that, in that image, but... She is definitely not being trained by Kylo in this circumstance um, because they are out to get each other. And this could only be one place. I'm pretty confident this could be the Death Star 2 now, especially because if you look off to the left, that could be a turbo laser of the Death Star. It looks very similar to one. Um, what the heck are they even doing at this place? Like, there's going to be lots of secrets hidden below, I'm sure. And this was actually a concept used in The Force Awakens about Endor and the Death Star. So I'm thinking that they're going to be mining stuff from material they haven't used. And this could definitely be that. Here is the most talked about shot that will be talked about and talked about until this film comes out. This is that shot that is similar to like what we got from the Last Jedi trailer with with um, Kylo holding out a hand to Rey and oh my God is this Raylo? So this is the same kind of effect, right? Everybody's gonna be talking about is this really Rey being dark side? And I have like four different options for this. So first off, it could simply be a clone. This could simply be a clone, kind of like the Empire, Dark Empire with um, the clone of Palpatine, and we know there was a clone of Luke in the expanded universe at some point. This could also be Rey being possessed by the Emperor. Maybe somehow she comes into contact with one of his artifacts. If you guys have read the comics, like the Lando comics or the Darth Vader comics, there's this Lord Momin's mask, and whoever puts this mask on gets um, basically possessed by this old uh, uh, dark side character. So maybe there's some of that Sith alchemy uh, kind of going on. Uh, this could also be Rey just saying, look, I, I want to go to the dark side for some reason. We know that Luke actually called her out on it and, and The Last Jedi is saying like she went straight to the dark. So there's a possibility there. And I think the most likely is that this is a simply a vision of Rey. Um, similar to what Luke had in the cave on Dagobah, it's kind of his trial. This maybe could be her trial. Uh, maybe she's standing across from this image of herself and she has to fight her just like Luke fought Vader and found out that was actually him. Maybe this will be the catalyst to really kind of hone in her emotions because there's been moments, especially in The Force Awakens, when she kind of taps into a level of rage. So that could simply be happening there. But what's really exciting is this blade is something we haven't seen in Star Wars, at least like a foldable lightsaber that ignites at the same time. Um, it's it just like the hilt of that thing is definitely not her staff. So a lot of people are saying that could be that event, uh, you know, in the force awakens or whatever. Um, but the hilt looks like a little bit longer. It's like kind of like a saber staff. Uh, what's really cool is it's, it's coming back full circle guys. So Darth Maul had a double bladed red lightsaber in the Phantom Menace. And now we're ending the saga with Rey having a double bladed red lightsaber. I don't think the two characters are related whatsoever. Um, but I think it's kind of cool symmetry in the way that Star Wars has been always kind of rhyming with plot points and with, um, symbolism and, and imagery like that. Um, but yeah, this is very, very cool seeing this happen. And I think what could happen is maybe Rey does decide to go to dark because of the Emperor. And then we have Kylo switch over and go light side to try to pull her back or something. I think that would be the most interesting thing. Um, I don't really like the idea of redemption for Kylo, but if, but if Rey ended up going dark and he ended up going light at the end of this whole thing, I would actually really like that a lot. Maybe she could come back and do 10, 11, 12, like 10 or 15 years ago. And now she has the control of like this Sith Empire or something like that. Now that would be really cool. But yeah, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on all the new images in this special look. Uh, video. Let's talk about it all in the comment section below. There's a lot of Star Wars news coming out of D23. I talked about the Mandalorian trailer that came out. I also talked about the Obi-Wan news with Ewan McGregor confirmed to be coming back. So there's lots of going on uh, in Star Wars. So 
come and talk to me on the channel. You can go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you'll never miss another video. That is going to do it for me, Star Raptor. Thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you always. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.